Today's lecture is called Soil Water and Permeability. Uh, obviously, it deals with uh, the interaction between water and soil. We, we, we have already studied before in chapter two something called site uh, investigation and in chapter one something called uh, soil classification. So after what we have finished in, in, uh, in the previous year with the geology, we are now starting with soil mechanics. So we took the soil classification to understand the different particles of soil and we learned something about site investigation so that we can uh, uh, go to the site make some tests uh, get some samples take it to the lab and then get the parameters in this chapter we are going to uh, discuss what is the effect of water on the soil. Of course, water is everywhere. Uh, uh, water, uh, it comes from the, from the sky, it comes from uh, uh, seas, from any, any place, oceans. So water is there and it is below the ground. There, there is underground water so you have water below the ground and uh, uh, this water penetrates the soil so long that the water is there and is stagnant it do not, it, it does not move then it's not a big problem because i will deal with it in place the problem starts when water starts to move, if it moves above ground, there is a problem. What you have seen in the floods, and the, 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 it's, it's, it's really a, a big problem. And if it moves below ground, it is a problem. Because when water moves below ground, it means that there is pressure, high pressure of water in one place and low pressure of water in another place. So the difference in pressure pushes the water and lets it move from one place to the other. It affects uh, constructions like dams. Suppose you have a dam and you have water seeping below the dam. It means that water is going to leave the dam and by the time the water will uh, come out of the dam and go outside uh, your, 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 your reservoir of uh, you, you, you are storing water so water will uh, will be lost so you have to, uh, to, to know how to deal with this uh, this in case you are storing water but sometimes you don't you don't care for the water but what happens is that when water starts to move it changes the constituents of the soil below it may take fine particles from the soil from one place to the other. It means that uh, the place where fine particles leave the soil, it means that you, uh, 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 you will have loose soil. So it's, it's, it's another problem. So water is very important. And as we said before in the uh, geology course, uh, our study for geotechnical engineering is based on two sciences. The first one is geology and the second is hydrology. So hydrology is very important, similar to uh, geology for us. So we need to understand what, uh, what is it. So what are we going to study with this? Uh, we are going to study something called soil permeability. This is, we are going to study many things, but soil permeability is, is the first thing that we have to, to, uh, to understand. Permeability means the... Uh, uh, yes, ability of water to pass through the soil. In some cases, it is very quick. 
in some cases it is very 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 slow so it it it, it depends on the type of the soil so the permeability is a measure of the ability of water to uh, of soil to allow water to pass through it it is typically represented by a letter k k is the permeability of soil uh, this is important uh, this is an important information for any engineering structure located on in or under the soil it's, uh, we need to know it. the presence of water affects soil properties this is what we have just said so this what we were discussing about permeability which is the movement of water within the soil to calculate we said that we are engineers uh, we, we, we do not just uh, 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 study description we study numbers if I say ability of water to pass through soil how much is it able very able or not able or uh, yani, uh, semi able uh, I, we, we, we cannot accept this we have to have numbers you have to tell me that the permeability of soil is five is nine if you tell me five and nine then I can compare five to nine but very and uh, extremely I cannot compare so uh, there is a law called Darcy's law Darcy's law is very very important in anything related to water and seepage of, uh, of water in soil uh, there is an experiment this experiment uh, we put a sample of soil in uh, this device and we have water at a fixed level at this uh, uh, direction and at a less level at the other direction so there is a difference in pressure there is an edge height of water of pressure from one side to the other because of this what will happen water will is going to be pushed to penetrate the soil and to move to the other side how can we do this we get the sample put it here and we have to know some factors we have to, to measure this edge we have to measure the area of the cross section of the soil we have to know the length of the soil the equations say Q which is the discharge the quantity of water that is going to pass through any conduit is Q is equal to K K is a coefficient of permeability multiplied by something called I I is the hydraulic gradient from the name hydraulic gradient it, hydraulic it means it deal with water gradient something like transfer it, the, the, the transfer of pressure the rate of transfer of pressure so the rate of transfer of water pressure so hydraulic gradient as if it is how much is the difference between the two points I mean if I have a head edge this is the, the this is the difference but actually it is not a gradient why because if this edge is affecting a sample of length L it's not the same if the length was 2L or 3L so this same edge if I use it to pass water through a sample that is of length 3L it needs higher head so that's why the hydraulic gradient is the H divided by L uh, okay uh, th th this uh, equation uh, it says that V equal K multiplied by I V is the uh, velocity of water K is the uh, coefficient of permeability I is the uh, hydraulic gradient this is uh, another small derivation of the equation that will help us in this uh, in this uh, to, so, to, so, to get the permeability of soil uh, so obviously I just put the sample I measure everything and then everything is known for me except for 
K, I get the K, then K is the permeability of soil. So now, if I take different samples, I take sand, clay, uh, silty sand, uh, all types of sample, put it here, and measure the value of K, then I can say that the permeability of water in sand is so and so, and the permeability of water in clay is so and so. I can calculate it. So th this is how we measure uh, the permeability of uh, uh, of water in different types of soil. Importance of soil permeability in civil engineering. Why do why do we study this? We study this because suppose you are going to do an earth dam. This is uh, this is the high dam in Aswan. Here is the high water, and here is the low water. So the dam is here, and it prevents water from passing from behind to, in, to the front. This is a cross-section in any dam, similar to the high dam, and this is the water stored here, and here is the dry side. Suppose, not suppose, this will happen. Water is going to seep from the high pressure, penetrate this dam, and go to the other side. So actually, if I don't study seepage, then it means that with time, the high dam will lose all the water that is storing. So there should be a way to design this dam to prevent water from seeping from one direction to the other. So this is, uh, uh, this is one important thing. Why do we study seepage? Because if we study seepage and we find seepage here is very high, it means that we cannot use this as something to prevent water from seeping. Uh, uh, you, you, can, you can do it. You, you, you do this when you go to the seashore. Uh, uh, you can bring some water and you want to, to store it on the sand. So you try to put water in sand, you find that water seep all around. But if you, if you bring some clay and you make a dike or something like a, 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 a barrier all around made of clay and you put the water inside, it will keep water uh, more, uh, more time. It means that the seepage within the clay is very small compared to the seepage within the sand. So this is what we, so do you expect the high dam, the, 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 uh, the inside of the high dam, it is clay or sand? Clay. clay, it should be clay. But clay is very weak. So it has to be a mixture. From inside, it should be clay to prevent water from passing. And all around, we have to add big boulders to give strength to the dam because uh, if I just put clay imagine the uh, big dam all of this height made of clay it will move so to prevent it from moving then I have to add something that is very strong and not important that it is uh, it prevents seepage because I already have a core that prevents the seepage which is the clay so in a dam like this, I expect that the, the middle portion will be made of clay and the outer portion will be made of boulders and gravel and sand and something like this to be strong. Uh, this was called an earth dam because it is made of soil material. There is something called concrete dam. Uh, me, me, I don't know if you, if you, if you know, know any dam that it is concrete, but I can show you later uh, photos of uh, dams made of concrete. They, they, they have a special uh, shape because you find them very slim compared to the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the earth dam. This is a cross-section in a con concrete dam. 
this is the water that is being prevented from uh, moving and it goes to the other side. What will happen? What will happen is that water, of course, water will find it very difficult to move through the concrete, but it will be easier to move below the concrete. So it will move here and at this. So I have to study seepage so that the pressure here is not enough to push the water to move all of this distance and go to the other side. I have to ensure that by the end the water reaches to this point, the pressure is zero. If the pressure is zero, then water is not going to continue. But if there is a pressure, then water will continue to seep and so on, and maybe water will, will, will finish from this side and go to, uh, uh, to the other side and, and spread all around. So this this is the uh, uh, this is the shape of the concrete dam. Uh, then we have one of the things that we are going to study in this lecture is to study the quantity of water that may flow below a shape like this. There is something called flow nets, and we will study these flow nets to understand to to calculate the amount of water that can seep or move below uh, the dams. Stability of slopes. If I have the same, this is an earth, the earth dam, and I have water, uh, water here, because, uh, because of seepage, the flow of water may push this block and let it fail. So stability of slopes this is a slope, and this is a slope. The stability of this slope depends on my study of seepage, because this slope may be safe in normal condition, but when water comes, it takes everything in, in its way. So, uh, many, many, uh, suppose, you know, in Libya, uh, the, 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 uh, one of the, 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 the uh, there was two dams in, in near Darna, and they uh, collapsed or failed. What happened? What happened is that, of course, the, 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 the dam itself had many problems, but the major thing is that the water behind the dam increased in height. So the height increased, the amount of pressure coming from this dam and maybe the seepage of water below it or through it if it, if it was uh, uh, made of uh, ground, made of, uh, uh, what do we call it, uh, earth dam, if it was an earth dam, then in this case, the seepage itself will induce motion in this, uh, in this slope. Another thing that, uh, that we do to study uh, this uh, water seepage is dewatering. You heard about dewatering before. Uh, have you been to a site where they do dewatering? What is dewatering? Suppose that I have ground water. Uh, usually if you dig in the ground, you may find water. It means that there is water below ground. Suppose I need to do to construct a building and I'm going to do a basement below ground or two basements or three basements, then I have to excavate and when I excavate, I will find water. So how, how I'm going to work in water? I cannot construct my building inside water. So I have to do something. Suppose that this is the level of the ground water and I want to construct a building here. So I want to to uh, excavate this area. If I excavate this area, I will end up having a swimming pool. Uh, I cannot build in a swimming pool. So what I have to do, I put walls all around. Uh, I try to dewater or take water off from inside and study that this, the water from outside will not come back to recharge 
the water that I have taken away by pumping. So I try to pump the water from inside and try to pump more water than the amount of water that is coming to me by seepage from the ground below. So in this case, I end up with having a dry land. If I have a dry land, then I can start my construction. Once I finish, everything back to normal and water will come, but my construction will be finished and it's, it's okay because I, I am happy with having a building, a basement below the, below the ground and below the water level. It's okay for me, but I cannot construct it during having the water level. Another thing we study is called uplift. Uh, you swim in water. It means that water can carry you inside it. So if water can carry you while swimming, it can carry buildings. Why not? If I have high pressure of water, then it means that this high pressure of water may push my structure above. Suppose I have here, this is a swimming pool. Of course, swimming pool is full of water. So when it is full of water, nothing will happen because the uplift from here will be uh, counteracted by the, uh, the, the water inside the tank, which is the swimming pool, then there is no problem. But if I now want to clean this swimming pool, then I ha will have to get rid of water here, or I need to do some maintenance. Then there is a case of loading where I have a space here without water, but outside I have water, and this water has an uplift that is pushing the swimming pool above. It may uh, take the swimming pool uh, from, from the ground. So uplift is very important. So in the design of this swimming pool, I have to study many cases. One of the cases will be a case of empty pool with uplift. I have pressure from below and I don't have pressure from above. So I need, imagine, can you tell me with, with what you think now? If I have pressure here, what will prevent these walls and the ground from moving up? Suppose that this pressure is very high. What can prevent the, the, this structure from being affected by the uplift. So the weight, the, the, the own weight of the structure. Uh, if I have a, a tank or a swimming pool, then it has its own weight. So the own weight will take part of the load. This is one thing. Strength. Can you think? Strength. Strength of what? Strength, يعني, you, you may be a very strong person and you go into the water and the water will carry you. Uh, similar to a very weak person going into the water and the water will carry him. Uh, 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 we are dealing with weights. But there is something else we, 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 that affects us, which is the friction. The friction between the soil and the uh, walls of this uh, structure. This carry apart. So if I'm designing the, something for the uplift, I have to take the worst condition. I don't have anything inside, but the minimum is that I will have the own weight and I will have the friction with the friction and cohesion, of course, friction, any, anything that prevents two things to move relative to each other. So uh, I, have, I have to ensure that the, the uplift force is less than the sum of the own weight of the structure plus the friction or cohesion with the soil all around. So this is the fourth thing. Factors affecting soil permeability. These are, uh, we, 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 uh, we, 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 there are things that affects the, uh, the, the, the permeability of soil. Void ratio. 
If I have soil with big void ratio, would you expect, do you know what is void ratio? Void, it's the, the percentage of voids inside the soil. If I have soil with very high percentage of voids, and if I have soil with very low percentage of soil, which will be easier for water to seep through? With big, big voids. So void ratio affects the, the, the more the big uh, the void ratio, the, the here uh, uh, K uh, uh, is proportional to E square. E is the void ratio. So K is proportional to E square. It means that it's very much affected by uh, the void ratio. The grain size, if I have small particles and if I have big particles, which will affect the, the which will make more seepage do you think small particles or big particles um, usually big particles because with big particles you have more void ratio it is related to void ratio so that's why uh, it, it is proportional to uh, the, 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 the grain size a grain shape if I have uh, the, the shape of a grain is is is, is different then uh, because the shape means the surface area of the uh, of the, of the grains the more the surface area the more uh, if you have big surface area the bond between the water and the surface area will increase so it will prevent hinders the motion it it will prevent a little bit the motion of of, of water degree of saturation if the voids is already full of water how come additional water is going to pass? It's not going to pass. But if I have, uh, 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 I don't have water inside, I don't have water, and I put water, again, uh, additional water, the water is going to seep very quickly because the, uh, all the voids are, are, are clear. Adsorbed water in, in, in soil, uh, uh, there is a minimum amount of water that are there all of the time. Uh, 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 we have voids, but but these voids, uh, they may be full or they may be empty, but they are never zero, zero uh, fu fully empty. Part of them has some water that are very well attached to the grains. They do not move. To move them, you have to take the sample, put it in the oven, heat it so that the water would evaporate. But usually, it cannot just move. So, uh, uh, we said about adsorbed water, which is the minimum amount of water that are there in any soil sample. It cannot move unless you heat it to, to, to evaporate the water. Uh, the properties of water, uh, if the water is viscous uh, or uh, the, the, the viscosity is high, the viscosity is low, uh, it includes uh, salt, it does not include salt. The, the foreign materials, if this water is pure water or, or it includes impurities, all of these are factors that would affect the permeability of uh, soil in, uh, in water, in, in uh, permeability of water in soil. Uh, now we said that we can calculate the permeability uh, in the lab. Suppose that I have three layers of soil, of different types of soil, and I have water passing horizontally, going in this direction. So I can take sample from this, send it to the lab, calculate the permeability of it. It is K1. And then I take another sample from here, send it to the lab. I, the, the, the same that we have done here. Uh, wh where is it? This one, the, the, this, this experiment. I can calculate the uh, coefficient of permeability of any sample. Bring a sample from soil one and test it here. Bring another sample, soil two, and test it, and another sample, soil three, and test it. So now I will end up having three values, K1, K2, and K3. So now water is going in this, propagating in this direction. If I want to calculate an equivalent K, because of course the velocity of water here is different than the velocity of water here and there. 
everyone has a special degree of permeability. If water is going in this direction, what is the equivalent permeability of the three layers? I want to calculate the amount of water that will pass from this direction to the other direction. To calculate this, you have to give me one number for the uh, uh, coefficient of permeability. So to calculate the coefficient of permeability for layers that, para, that are para, parallel to each other, then this is the equation. K equivalent equal the K of each layer multiplied by the thickness of each layer plus the k of the other layer and so on. So it is the summation of kh divided by the summation of h, the total h. So this is the, the k equivalent. Suppose that the direction of propagation is different. It is the vertical direction. Uh, in this case, the water is going horizontally. Now I want water to go pass by the first layer and then go penetrate the second layer and then penetrate the third layer and go in the other direction. So the degree of propagation here is perpendicular. So in this case, the equation of the E equivalent will differ. It will be summation of H divided by the summation of H by K. So each H uh, divided by each k plus the other h divided by k plus the other h divided by k. This gives us the denominator and above here will be the summation of the h. Just in case we need to calculate uh, uh, the, the, the permeability of different layers. This is an example. Of course, we are not going to, 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 to say it to, uh, bit by bit because uh, we have a soil, we have the, the permeability of uh, the different layers, and I need to calculate the uh, uh, equivalent permeability in case water is coming perpendicular or horizontal. Just normal substitution in the uh, previous equation. Determination of the coefficient of permeability. So now we said that, as you have just seen, we need the coefficient of permeability. And we said that there is a, 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 a very trivial experiment like this. It can give us the coefficient of permeability. Is this the only way for the, uh, determining the coefficient of permeability? No, there are many things. How, what are these things? Let, let, let's, let's see. Here, determination of the coefficient of permeability. The coefficient of permeability can be determined by three things. The one in the middle is the lab test, the one similar to the one that you have just seen. Sample got taken to the lab and tested. But is the sample that was taken to the lab in the same conditions that are there in, uh, in the soil? in the normal condition, no? Because I took a sample from the site, I transferred it to the lab, and I affected it by pressure, uh, movement, heat, uh, many things happen. So the sample is different. So the lab test is very accurate, but the sample itself is not the same. It's not the same soil, it's different. So in this case, I have the lab test, but it is not adequate. It, it, uh, it does not give me 100%. I'm not sure 100% that this is the exact permeability of soil. So there are two other ways. So we have to, 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 to check them. One of them is called theoretical formulas. Scientists gave us some formulas. Uh, there is something called Hazen's formula. Uh, cause needs formula, many, many formulas, but th these are the two uh, important uh, formulas. I just, uh, there is an equation, I uh, add num put uh, numbers in this equation, calculate the value, and I get the value. Of course, if I have a standard equation for any 
type uh, when we see the formula maybe the formula depends on the grain size of the uh, of the soil but it depends on the grain size there are many other factors we have just see, seen that grain size was just one factor from many factors that affects the uh, the permeability uh, where is it i think we, we, we it was here we said that uh, 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 grain size is is uh, or grain size and grain shape is is just one or two factors, but we have many things. Void ratio, we have a degree of saturation, we have many things. So, uh, uh, depending on just one important factor is not enough. So, the theoretical formulas that we use to calculate the coefficient of permeability of soil are not very accurate. By the way, lab tests are better because in lab tests, though I use a distorted sample, but I have already sampled. Uh, this is just a theory. So lab tests is better than theoretical formula. In lab tests, we have two types of tests. Constant head test and falling head test. What are these both? I just show you something uh, uh, quickly and then we'll study it <coughs> in details. Here I have, what do you call this test? Is it a constant head or a falling head? I have here water, it is always at this level because any additional water, I'm, I'm always pouring water and any additional water seeps from here. So water is always here. And in this location, water is always here also because any additional water will go there and I am always pouring more water to recharge so this is a constant head test why because h will be there from the start of the test till the end of the test what if i do not recharge the water i leave it like this and i leave water to go from this direction what will happen water will start to seep away to go away to go away and I start the test with the head H, and maybe in the middle of the test, the water will be here, so the head will be H divided by two, and maybe at the end of the test, H will be equal to zero. So it means that it is a falling head test. This is, in principle, what is a falling head, and what is a constant head test. Third method of uh, calculating uh, uh, the field, uh, the, the, the coefficient of permeability, is the uh, field tests. So I go to the field, I make my test inside the field. So what do you think? Do you think it would be better or uh, worse? The sample will be better, and the test, of course, I don't have a full uh, uh, control like the control I have in the lab, but I can try to be as much as possible very accurate. Because in this case, the effect of the sample is very high. If I study the sample in place, then this, this, this is very, very good. So I uh, uh, have uh, many uh, tests. Of course, I can do uh, falling test uh, uh, experiment on site. I can just bring a tube, fill it with water, and let, it, let the water seep from this tube to the ground. So in this case, I am uh, uh, doing a falling head test on the ground sample. Anyway, uh, we, we, we'll discuss this later, but we have uh, in the field test, usually they do something called pumping test. Pumping test is instead of seeping water inside, no, I'm pumping water outside. I just bring a pump, take water from the, from the soil, 
When I take water from the soil, I ca calculate the amount of water and the, the time that was needed to, for the water to, 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 to be pumped and the quantity of water that I calculated. So in this case, I can study how much water were taken from the soil in a fixed period of time, then I can get the permeability of uh, water in soil. This was a, a, an introduction for the, th the, 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 the different types of tests. Theoretical formulas, we have Hazen's formula, and we said we have Kozny's formula. Hazen formula depend on, th there is a factor called C, uh, this is a factor, but it depends on something called D10. You remember the sieve analysis? Sieve analysis test. When we do the sieve analysis, there is something called D10, which is the, 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 the diameter of the sieve that managed to pass 10% uh, of the sample. So this is D10. So as I told you, most of these formulas depend on the uh, particle size. So this depends on D10. D10 is a particle size. Kozny's formula. Kozny's formula depends on the porosity. Uh, uh, of, it depends on N. It's, it's the porosity of the... Uh, so here, another equation depending on the, the voids inside the soil. So one depends on the... Uh, on the, the uh, particles, the other depends on the uh, uh, void inside the soil. So, as I t t told you in the previous slide, that each formula will concentrate on something and will study this. So that's why theoretical formulas are not uh, very accurate. It is the least accurate method for studying uh, permeability of soil. Lab test. This is the complicated uh, arrangement of the test. The one I have seen, you, you have seen before, the horizontal one. This was uh, a, t a, t a test, but this was the theory. How do they do it uh, in lab? They do this. They put the sample in this uh, place. They, they have a special arrangement to ensure that water will always be at a fixed level and they have another arrangement here to ensure that water will be at a fixed level uh, f from the exit and they study the pressure of water at uh, two points pressure of water here and the pressure of water there and they use this equation this equation say that q which is the quantity of water that was collected in a certain period of time. So it is equal to, this is the end of the equation, k, which is, k, which is the, uh, uh, the uh, coefficient of permeability of soil. It is equal to uh, q multiplied by i, multiplied by, uh, divided by h, which is the, 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 the head, uh, the, the divided by a, which the, is the area of the cross-section, uh, divided also by t, which is the time needed to collect the, the amount. It's the same as the, the previous one, but this is more elaborate. So this is uh, the, the test. Sample, water passing, collecting water in a special period uh, uh, of time, and during this, I make some measurements, I uh, uh, substitute in this equation to get the value of K. This is an example. It gives you all the, uh, the data. Uh, you have uh, a flow of, uh, of so and so. It was measured in a period of five minutes. Uh, the sample was uh, 10 centimeter in diameter. You have all the, 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 the parameters. You just put the parameters substitute in your equation to get the permeability of soil. Uh, the, the other test is called the falling head. The falling head test is similar to this one, but what is the difference? Here I keep the water at a certain level. I always have a pressure at a certain level. 
Here, I don't care. I want the water to start from a high level, and by the end of the test, the, the level decreases. So this is the other type. So it's just water inside the tube, and this is the, 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 the sample. I start the test at H1, I end the test at H2. Water is collected. I This is the equation. It is different than the other equation. I substitute in this equation to get the K of the uh, uh, soil. Uh, the, 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 uh, the last thing is the field tests. We said that the field test, we have a permeability test, uh, not permeability, pumping test. In this pumping test, by the way, pumping test, we do it whether we, uh, uh, for testing or not for testing, we do it during Uh, digging wells. I, I need to uh, I need to have a well and uh, to dig a well. I, j I don't just dig a well and tell them, uh, yani, okay, use it. I have to tell them, I already dug this well, and this from this well you can get water, a discharge of so and so. Usually when I tell you I need a well, you will tell me, what is the discharge you are requiring from this well? I will tell you that I need an amount of water of so and so. So uh, 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 this is uh, this is the well, and they uh, 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 suck water from inside of the well in a certain period of time, and they measure the decrease in the water level. They also have two, call it piezometers, call it. Uh, 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 investigating wells outside. Yani this is the main well, but these are two other subsidiary wells. I don't uh, do anything except measure the uh, uh, depth of water at these uh, two wells. So I pump water from here and measure the level of water here and measure the level of water there and use this equation and substitute in this equation to get the amount, uh, to, 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 to calculate the key, uh, the, the value of K. Uh, you have here two, two different equations. One equation, this, this one is, this is the, the, you see here, this is an impermeable layer, but on top there is no impermeable layer. So water is not confined, water is, uh, uh, The, the bottom of water, you have an impermeable layer, and you have water on top of this impermeable layer. Sometimes you may have something called aquifer. Aquifer means you have an impermeable layer here, and you have another impermeable layer there. So water is surrounded between two impermeable layers. In this case, the equation will differ. That's all. So this is the, the other shape of uh, the equation in case it is uh, uh, not, it is a confined aquifer. Here it is not a confined aquifer, but here it is confined because I have additionally an impermeable layer on the top. Uh, this is another uh, uh, example giving me uh, the, 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 the various Uh, what do I need from here? I need the quantity of water, the time that was uh, in which I collected the water, the decrease in the height of water due to pumping, and the distance between this observation well and the main well. So this is R1, R2, here is H1, H2, and the quantity of water, and so on. So I take all of these parameters, substitute in my equation to get the, uh, uh, the permeability of soil. Uh, we can stop this part of the lecture uh, here. Uh, uh, the, the next part of the lecture will be the flow nets how to uh, understand the flow nets. But now we know what is the permeability of soil, how can we calculate it, the different types of uh, methods for calculating the permeability of soil, which is accurate and which is not accurate. If you read this lecture, uh, 
after that you will find that it is very simple uh, it's nothing but because you have many many uh, rules and uh, things like this so that you you feel a little bit crowded with the uh, information but it's really nothing uh, the examples are straightforward everything will be fine uh, the, the next part of the lecture will be flow nets it's something uh, very very uh, very easy because it, it just drawings uh, we, we solve it by drawing something uh, we'll stop here for this uh, lecture and thank you